All right, everybody, welcome back to Value Stack. Today's guest is Thomas Jestifer, or Jestifer BTC, man of many names. Uh, Jestifer is the founder of Amboss.space, and early on, uh, I found first it was satbase.org. Uh, he's an educator, he's a co founder, community leader in Bitcoin, and Truly one of the kindest, most helpful people I've met in Bitcoin, both online, in communities, and in person uh, at the different events. Uh, back in 2020, he was one of the key people that was instrumental in helping me understand Bitcoin and the scaling debate, particularly when it comes to the Lightning Network, and is on my short list of people that I go to when I have Lightning Network related questions. Uh, it's been incredible to literally watch him build Amboss from day zero. I was one of the first people to claim a node on there and watch him through Amboss push Lightning Network adoption in a meaningful way. And yeah, man, it's an absolute honor to have you on the show. So welcome to Value Stack. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, super excited to go through all this stuff. Um, well, uh, so we'll start just like we do normally. Um, give us a bit of an idea of how you got into Bitcoin, your your rabbit hole uh, story. And are you in it for the sovereignty or are you in it for the tech? Oh, good question. Um, so I, you know, I feel like I'm more into it from, from the tech side of things. Um, I think uh, I had struggled with uh you know kind of like the 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 wall street um whole political movement you know like the the one percent and versus the nine ninety nine percent so i like definitely picked up that whole um urge to to change the way that things work um and and once i discovered bitcoin i was like oh okay this is a this is a path forward um for how we could actually meaningfully re-architect how the financial system works and who benefits from it. Um, one of my first jobs out of college um, after studying environmental engineering was uh, working in a call center and uh, answering questions about class action lawsuits. Uh, most of those were about banks uh, reorganizing debit card transactions. Um, and they reorganized them to maximize overdraft fees and you know, I I thought that was uh, extremely wrong. Yeah, um, and I was curious, like why, like why didn't people change banks? Um, and then learning a bit more about it, it was because all of the banks did it, um, and there mm. was no other alternative. But now, now there's Bitcoin, um, and and uh, like hearing Andreas Antonopoulos talk about it, um, reading the the Internet of Money. It really pushed me down the rabbit hole um, and to find that there is because Bitcoin operates on consensus, uh, you don't have this issue where a few powerful individuals get to make decisions for all of their customers slash products. Um, and yeah, Bitcoin is a huge empowerment technology. Um, so so getting to getting to, to build off of that has been you know, very exciting. So I'm. I'm very excited about Bitcoin as a technology um, and a technology to empower people. When, like, at what point in your, gotta be careful how I phrase this, call it crypto education process, did you connect the dots about Bitcoin and its unique properties? Because if I recall from our you know conversations we've had in the past, like, you didn't just immediately say, oh, Bitcoin, everything else is crap, right? Like you, you went through a similar learning process that we all, most of us do. That's why partly why we do the show is to like help people oh, cut sure. the, yeah, it's like, all right, you don't need to make the same mistakes we did. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I definitely went through a phase because, you know, I, I got wrapped up in the, the blockchain, everything marketing. Um, and so you're in it for I remember, the tech. Like, so that, that seems like a, yeah. a natural appeal. Yeah, um, I was just, I was thinking like, oh, like we could use this for everything, like put health records on the blockchain and, you know, you don't have to 
uh, you know, deal with all the hospitals having all this information about you anymore. Put it on the blockchain. And uh, the more I learned about it, and I think it was um, it was reading uh, Parker Lewis's uh, pieces that that really changed my mind, um, saying that you know value is going to accrue to the one one monetary uh, yes. unit. Yeah. Um, and you're not going to be splitting your value between these different monetary assets. Um, right. It's like and, the singularity where it's like, I'm going to store a hundred percent of my money in what I view as the best money, 0% of the money and what I view as the second best money, as long as there is a capacity to store all of the money in the best money. So like to compare that to historical analogs, like maybe like at some point, storing all of your money in gold, even though it was a superior money, was impractical because of the space it took up and the cost of storage. But w assuming that the network can sustain it, like, or you have the security to be able to hold it, you can store all your money in the best and not the lesser. Yeah, I think um, one of the most compelling pieces was just protocol stability, um, because you don't have to be in Bitcoin for very long to to see uh -huh. one of the cryptos go under um, mm. and or have a some type of protocol bug uh, or just be a victim of exchanges, which I mean, most people that trade in cryptocurrencies are going to be the ones that get rubbed by the exchanges. Right. So well, especially right now. I mean, this is like the the ongoing conversation today. Like, it just This is July 20th, 2022. Um, we just in the last month have had Voyager and Celsius, two big crypto exchange lenders file for bankruptcy, chapter 11 question. We won't, we won't get into this in the show, but there's question as to whether they even could file in the bankruptcy manner that they did. Um, and yeah, it's like there, this, it doesn't, it doesn't take long, right? Like there's, whether it's protocol hacks and DeFi, Although I'm not sure how decentralized DeFi is, and or or the CFI, or like I, I swear Alex Mashinsky said they were like the DeFi DCFI or something like or CDFI. Uh, anyway, all those terms are silly, but yeah, it doesn't take long to uh, to connect the dots on how Bitcoin's different than the rest of the protocols, and it was the first one, right? So for the people who got in, and like, not there's not there's many of them, but People got it in like 2012 or something like they're like, yeah, duh, of course, it's like Bitcoin's the king, you know. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's that's it, it, exactly right. Um, and uh, I think, you know, part of the motivation for Bitcoin was trying to avoid all the leverage. Um, and I think the Celsius is of the world. Um, they and three arrows capital, who you know, just filed for Bitcoin bankruptcy is right. like that that was the biggest indicator like this is the whole issue right with, uh, that, that was in wall street that caused a global financial crisis um right. and like having having a meaningful alternative where you can actually spot leverage or like any of these pieces like this is just fundamental to bitcoin the protocol like it doesn't mean that there's not going to be leverage because there will be of course um but on Bitcoin, the protocol, you like all leverage is second class. Right, you know, right. Um, Private key control. Second class. Yeah. Right. So, well, it's so do you have the tokens or not? The all right. So, we talk, we're talking about like protocol strength, right? And to me, the reason, and I've said my Hail Marys, I've, uh, I've repented to Satoshi, I've apologized. You know, I used to get involved in like a lot of the altcoins, man. At one point, I had more larger percentage of my portfolio in altcoins than Bitcoin because I was a financial advisor and I subscribed to the theory of diversification. And I was like, well, Bitcoin's like already went up so much. And some of these other ones have, you know, XYZ improvements, improvements. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, like I'll diversify, right? And so anyway, protocol, as you learn, the strength and the resiliency, the decentralization, 
it's uh, historical uptime. Like these things all matter. And particularly when you're talking about something as important as uh, taking on a nation state's uh, purchasing power or ability to control purchasing power, you, you're up for it. You're, you're in an uphill battle, right? So one of the reasons I didn't click immediately that Bitcoin was the answer was the scaling problem. And mm -hmm. I read about that. I read about SegWit and the block size wars. And I truly like admit that I, at one point, like owned Bitcoin cash, like sold it at a loss, got a debt, you know, tax deduction. But, um, the, the, the truth is that like, I didn't get the scaling. And so when I met you in probably late 2020, we, I think we met in Bitcoin kindergarten. And one of the things that was very clear to me at that time was that you knew more about lightning network than literally anyone like that I had ever interacted with by several orders of magnitude, like nobody, like, and you explained it to me in such a way that I understood it like, like that. And that's how I knew like working in sales. I knew I was like, this guy can explain this complex thing. Like I'm fine. That means he's got mastery of the subject. Right. And so two things, how did you, like, how did you get involved in lightning network so early? Like, cause you were on this lightning network layer two protocol before most people, before Bitcoin magazine was talking about it as much. And, and, and second, um, what do you think, uh, is, uh, the, the key differences in lightning versus on chain? Like how, how, explain like I'm five. Uh, it's an ongoing process on how to figure out how to explain Lightning Network. Um, but uh, yeah, so thanks for being part of my practice runs on, on Bitcoin <laughs> kindergarten way back in the day. Um, but uh, my initial start in Lightning was, I, I think I was making my first purchase in Bitcoin and I, I, uh, I was buying a, a knife for my parents, like a, a really nice one that they could, you know, use to, to cut his fresh sourdough bread. Um, and, uh, and in buying that knife, my transaction did not go through in the 15 minutes that I was allotted at this, um, like, oh. like for, for a Christmas gift. And the mempool <laughs> was crazy high. So mm. I think I paid like, like a $25 transaction fee just to make this thing go through. And then it didn't arrive in the 15 minutes that it was allotted. It didn't get a confirmation. And so I had, so they had to refund the money, the, the Bitcoin to me. And then I had to do it again. And I was thinking there has to be a better way. Mm. Um, and so mm. my first exposure was um, Andreas Antonopoulos talking about this this cool new thing that that might actually improve the way that things operate. Um, and and then Eclair came out with their mobile wallet, um, which is now like reaching the end of life. Um, but I was able to open a channel uh, using the mobile app. And I yeah, I think one of my first channels was to Pollo Feed and I got to start feeding some chickens. Um, watch the chickens run over as the, you know, their ground up mealworms were dropped out of this thing. Um, and it, it was, it, it was like, uh, it was a real experience. Like I could press a button, uh, from my phone and like somewhere else in the world, like made an actual, an action happen. So mm -hmm. it was, was telling me that, that I had transacted real value, um, and it was realized instantly. Uh, right. And so that 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 was a big piece of inspiration for me. And yeah, so I was I was looking up, okay, like how do I find out this, um, like where to open a channel to this type of thing. So I was spent, spending lots of time on One ML, um, which was the the leading lightning which explorer. Which Amboss cannibalized. <laughs> well done. <laughs> well, like. Uh, you know, I was looking back on some of my chats where I had like first mentioned one and now, and, you know, I was thinking like, you know, I made some comment about like, you know, they can really do a lot with this. Um, but, you know, the user interface is just not that great. Um, mm. Also, it's uh, light mode. 
not dark mode. Yeah. Uh, Got to have so, the uh, system toggle of the you know sync with system settings. Like, come on, right. we're in 2022. I'm I'm a you know, 2020 was dark mode maxi, but now I'm like sync with time of day maxi. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, just it it became very interesting to me, and you know I could open a channel to a whole bunch of different people. Um, so then I got into node running and uh, got a raspy blitz going um, and then uh, joined in some of the communities uh, like the the LN ba balance channel chat. Um, and so we were we were making channels to each other and it was all using trust. Um, and uh, yeah, it was. It, yeah, and this was like, I mean, Lightning Network started basically in 2018 and, you know, I made my first channel in like late 2018 and then um was was like deep diving into raspy blitz 2019 so yeah it's been a been a progression but it's it's just becoming more and more interesting um and now like lightning network is taking off there's so many applications that are being built on it um so it's a super super diverse um and interesting ecosystem yeah, I mean, I think like w one of the coolest aspects of Lightning Network to me is the the verification process. Like when I signed into Amboss with Thunderhub, I was like, "Whoa, there's something here," and I recognized that like Anthony, your your co-founder, like, yeah, because he built both or had a hand in building both at least. Uh, there, there's some obvious like synchronicity between the two but this lightning login right like this is a thing that's not we're not even talking about sending money on an instant confirmation basis anymore we're talking about something completely different uh and if you look at like the lightning labs tarot uh the stable coin protocol their tokenized assets like right like we're all the things that all the altcoins are claiming to do better than bitcoin Instant settlement, speed of transactions, low cost, tokenized that like they're all coming to Bitcoin Lightning Network, right? So uh and, and again, dude, I, I I have to give recognition where it's due. I mean, like you were instrumental in me connecting that like like two years ago, where I was like, Oh wait, like Bitcoin can do all these things. It doesn't have to be here, it can be here, right? Like and for those listening. Uh, without video, I was saying not going sideways, but going building vertically instead on a on foundational layers above. Not everything needs to necessarily be confirmed on the base layer, um, but the sort of minting of new money, the the block creation aspect and the confirmation on the settlement side that needs to be on the base layer. But uh, and, and Lightning transactions do settle on the base layer. Um, they settle up in the channels and then eventually. Whether it's, you know, we have a channel open for an hour or a year, they eventually settle on the main chain. So it's using the implicit security um, of Bitcoin like beneath it. But there's, I know there's some, I think you taught me about griefing attacks. There's like the lightning rabbit hole is like a whole nother rabbit hole. So like if you're just learning about Bitcoin, if you're early to, if you're new to Bitcoin, the asset, I would encourage you to learn on chain first. But be aware of that lightning exists and how it will continue, as Jessica was saying, to play like this increasingly ubiquitous role uh, in it. Um, Hi. If you want to like get a basic understanding of lightning, you know, you're creating one Bitcoin transaction and it basically opens a joint account with with one other person. Um, and you're going to keep your own ledger of of who owns what portion of that joint account. And you can create that joint account with anybody. And when you want to pay the other person uh, in your joint account, it's simply a matter of updating the ledger with that one other person. But uh, what where it gets really exciting is that you could actually pay someone else uh, through through the the other person in your quote unquote joint account. Um, and so that joint account is just a channel. So create one Bitcoin transaction to start the thing and then another Bitcoin transaction to close it out. 
Um, and through that, that's that's the life of a Lightning channel and all the steps in between. It's just updating a, a simple ledger that you have with this one other person. So I've heard it as like a bar tab where people analogize it as like, hey, you know, you, you get three beers at the bar. You don't close out every time you order a beer. You close out at the end of the night when you finish, right? And that opening the tab is giving the opening the channel is like giving the credit card, establishing the, the trust and locking up a certain pre-authorized amount. Uh, and then closing is the closing of the channel and settling the balance of what the current different current balance is. The difference being that it can move both ways. Whereas like, you, you know, you open a bar tab, it's only going one way. Um, you know, you're, you're only spending money. Uh, but in a lightning channel, both participants, so the balance can increase or decrease. And where you were saying it's like super cool aspect is that you start having channels, I think they call them hops. Like you start getting like enough hops and like you're basically connected. What is it like three degrees of Kevin, eight, seven degrees, eight degrees of Kevin Bacon? Like, or I forget the number, but it's like everybody's right. related to Kevin Bacon if you, if you have enough uh, hops. And uh, the Lightning Network plays off that same principle where it's like, although I don't have a channel with someone, this person, I'm trying to send money to, I might have a channel with somebody who has a channel with somebody who has a channel with somebody who does. And each person collects a tiny little fee uh, for doing that service for the network, right? So uh, I think that fee aspect was what was so interesting to me because the idea that, all right, well, obviously people want to generate yield and this was kind of happening at the same time where like these Celsius and Voyagers and all were really getting popular in 2020 2021 uh and at the same time they were like hey you can generate yield in your bitcoin and the lightning network is like well if you become a routing node so can you except you're not handing over your keys right so I was, that was like wait this is a better way of doing this and at least so what i understand like that's part of uh i mean the tools that you created at amboss are served uh to or, or, or were created to serve node operators who particularly might be interested in that aspect of the Lightning Network. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about Amboss. Uh, what is it? How'd you create it? Where'd you get the idea? I think you already sort of talked about that. And then what are you guys doing over there uh, to help node operators get off from Celsius and make money elsewhere? Uh, yeah, huge, uh, huge question. Um, but I think the first uh, service that Amboss provides is, is simply displaying data. Um, and there's tons of data that a node receives all about the network. But when it comes to like getting connected on the Lightning Network, which is a key portion of this, um, you need to be discovered, basically. You know, like this isn't like trying to make it in Hollywood, uh, although that like that type of strategy might work. Um, but it's really standing out in the crowd. I mean, I was in these little uh, lightning chats and we would have a trickle of new users coming in. Uh, but with each new user, they needed to be connected as well. So I'm gonna have to take some of my Bitcoin and allocate it to them. Now that comes at a cost to me. I only have so much Bitcoin and not nearly enough to connect to everyone out there. Um, so, so one thing, one, I need the data. How do I connect to this node? And the other piece is uh, like, is this a worthwhile connection for me? And trying to find out like what other connections they have. Am I going to be able to pay to some unique destination now, um, like somewhere else in the world? Because yeah, I want my I want my node to be globally connected. Um, so so those were some of the first issues that we were tackling in Amboss. Um, one, display the data, make it a, a very nice intuitive platform, um, and also help with discoverability. Uh, from there, we added in this communities feature, which uh, kind of like, th there were already sub communities on the Lightning Network, but there wasn't really a good display of it. Mm. Um, so we've added these uh, community tags to nodes or you have to get approvals from the community in order to, to bear that tag on your Amboss node profile page. Now, from there, 
uh, this discoverability problem um, and also a liquidity problem, we were we've uh, attempted to to answer the the need for liquidity and discoverability with Magma. Um, so on Magma, you can you can go and just buy a channel because on Magma there's a bunch of node operators that say, hey, I've got one Bitcoin of of liquidity that I can allocate in a channel to you. I can connect you to the Lightning Network so you can receive payments over Lightning. And for that service, I'll charge a fee. Now, each of these node operators are going to charge a different fee. And, and uh, you know how connected they are influences how valuable that connectivity is. Right. Like, if you're Kevin Bacon, like, like you're going to have a much bigger network a whole bunch of people you already know about fee, you right. you can charge a higher fee uh, because this is valuable liquidity i think the bi biggest example of that was uh when preston pish spun up his lightning node um like preston pish has a fantastic reputation in the bitcoin space and like that was like our biggest traffic day uh, at, at Amboss, so, so when Preston Fish, you know, posts his Amboss link to his node, and uh, like his his node became the fastest growing node on the network, uh, just because I'm people surprised. wanted to create a connection to this I, guy. I opened a channel to him, um, so yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, everybody wants to. Um, and like, dude, you don't you have know, a channel with Preston? Fun. Get out of here. Your liquidity um, trash. And then, <laughs> Like BTZ Sessions has done some fantastic yeah. work, you know. So that's like that's one to connect to, and that became that would became important infrastructure when it came to uh, like all the stuff that was happening in Canada. Oh, so yeah. it's especially when they like, started working confiscating like the private keys and all. It's like settlement nature and of the light yeah. network. The, the, you know, the pretty hide, the, exciting. The hideability. Because you can't find like the in between people like you don't see beginning and end, if I recall. Right. I mean, it's uh, while like Lightning privacy is not perfect, it's still right. pretty darn good. Um, and transaction level privacy, and not necessarily. Right. Um, it's like the, the closing channels is where the privacy mistakes are made. Like I know, like, if you open a channel, use a public alias, and then you close the channel while well, your UTXO. Happens and then you combine that with other addresses. Um, now it's pretty obvious you can track that further. So I have a tip that I'll share because I've learned from personal experience. Maybe I don't know if you have any to share. So like in the past where I've closed channels and I've used the public alias, I've sent those coins after I closed the channels over to the exchange. And I sent them like to Coinbase, right? And then Coinbase then does whatever they do with them. They put them in the little black box of Coinbase and hopefully I see them. And then I, you know, some at some time in the future, then withdrew them and broke the link. Now, of course, you could do this with Mixer um, as well, right? I just, you know, didn't. but uh, I, I have I have hesitations about mixing, uh, which I think like are more like because of the state that I, like the, the country and state that I live in um, mm -hmm. than anything. But uh, yeah, like so I, that's like one way I've like thought about because I'm like oh shit track my transactions forever find that so um do you have any like tips for like using lightning in a more secure way whether it's like i know like one one that i can think of uh, about yeah uh one of the uh, one tip that i could offer is that uh when opening a, a channel you can actually get someone else to open a channel to you and uh, you can basically say like, "Hey, here's my here are my node connection details. Um, you know, please open a channel to me." And you can do that in a private chat. Maybe do that over Signal or something. Um, and and then you can you can avoid involving any of your UTXOs in an actual transaction uh, to to create a channel. So so then there's essentially no record that that like like your KYC stack of, of Bitcoin got involved in a lightning channel at all. So if someone's opening um, a channel to you, right? Because when you open channels, it shows that the opening transaction comes out of your wallet, 
and there's a closing transaction. One thing I've thought of is like when it settles, you don't know which balance is whose, right? It could be either a 50 50 shot, though, that one of the UTXOs is. You. Uh, right. Yeah, it's like, you know, I, I got Mastering Lightning. I haven't I haven't gotten through it yet, but uh, it is it is on the list. Uh, <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep up here. <laughs> well, you're building but, a company, uh, man. Yeah, <laughs> which, which is a, a wild experience and something that I've uh, certainly never done before. Well, let's uh, let's uh, talk talk about that a little. So like what like what's it like to build a company? I think we're about the same age. So like, you know, we're young, not like we're not old, but we're not like kids anymore, you know, and like, what's it like building a company in this stage of your life, that, particularly in a bear market? Yeah, um, it's it was a pretty exciting journey, um, and like there's no shortage of of risk there. Uh, but the one piece of advice is uh, don't spend your own money on building a company. Uh, spend someone else's, um, and, and th there's people that are that are willing to take a bet on on you um, and and your team in order to deliver on things that we want to deliver um, especially in bitcoin especially in lightning there's some uh vcs that are you know aware of some of the innovation that's going on and and are particularly bullish on it um so uh let's see so uh ap or anthony podev and um he uh he reached out to me he was the thunder hub developer as you mentioned previously um wanting to team up and i'm super glad that he did because like he's an incredible coder and developer um where i'm i'm much better on the the social side of things and i'm i can help out with with marketing explaining what we're doing um so so this was sort of a, a nice hybrid so you don't have to be a developer in order to start building on bitcoin right um you know from from there we we launched uh ambus on space and i was so enthused by the by the reception of it that i went ahead and and quit my quit my fiat job um because i was like like let's let's go and you know my bitcoin what were you uh, what were you this. doing before like just briefly uh, like, what... yeah i was working uh for the city of portland doing uh signals and street lighting engineering um and i was That's helping right. to figure out like where to place street lights um for even lighting um so i've transitioned from lighting to lightning uh, or i was gonna ask are you a roundabout maxi after your time and working in central planning uh roundabouts are awesome uh i kept on getting corrected as like no this is a traffic circle um because you know, <laughs> a whole bunch of transportation wonks um but uh they do take up a lot of space and doesn't always make sense in the city uh it's a lot of public right away from from lighting to lightning. So which uh, w which do you think is uh, is is more challenging, coordinating bad drivers or code that uh, there's no undo button for? Oh, you know the level of risk um, in traffic engineering is way way higher. Where <laughs> you know, like thankfully, lightning right now is like at the obvious level. Um, and there's there's a lot it's a lot more forgiving um yeah. it, you know there's not the expectation that this, this thing is going to be perfect and has 100 years of engineering behind it like the entire network is only four years old so i want to date this episode so that like 10 years from now um how roughly how many bitcoin are on the light network in channels today uh and we'll if you see, can I give can... us the amboss.space numbers or just give us like the readout of the dashboard like the number of channels number you know for like sure high level okay. so currently the capacity of the lightning network is 4300 bitcoin and that's on the public capacity which is and 80 also... million 90 million dollars about yeah i'm not looking at a price ticker um 20 something and yeah so fiat will do whatever it's going to do but i think bitcoin is what's important um and then there's sixteen thousand five hundred public nodes on the network um with eighty three thousand wow. channels 
How many claim nodes on Amboss today? I was uh, one of the first hundred, I think. So there's 5,117. 5, no way, man. So, That's awesome. So that means that over a third of the public network has already claimed their node on Amboss. Um, Look at that. So, yeah. Very, the flipping. Uh, When's the flipping yeah. of Amboss to 1ML? That's what I really, that's what the listeners are dying to know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. Uh, I actually don't have one ML numbers, um, but in order to claim your node, you have to open a channel to the one ML node, which is um, not a great node uh, as far as oh. liquidity goes. And um, and they so. don't have that authentication, like signing a message aspect. Either, so. Clearly, yeah. What what you were touching on was um, like just the L and D API, which is what. Uh, like the co-founder Tony was was using to to do the sign message, like it has all these basic cryptography tools. So so just by creating a nice user interface, like we're we're able to deliver cryptography tools um, and and basic ones to sign a message and verify a message, and we're using those um, for for cryptographic proof, um, right. which is you know like. This is like military grade technology and, mm -hmm. and we're using it now just for a smooth sign in experience. Um, and we haven't added um, for some of the more like lightning uh, native folks, uh, we haven't added LN URL off um, because it doesn't give us the information of, of which public key uh, mm -hmm. actually signed the message. It does provide proof, but it doesn't tell us to what we node know, you're, right? you're going to. Yeah. Um, so, so this is why we have the sign message the way we do. So your system's an interesting there. I want to ask a question on, uh, so you mentioned it was the L and D API it is L and D like, as far as I know, that's the implementation that is most popular. Having, having heard you say that about the sign in and these other cryptography tools that come with the, uh, lightning network, Damon, uh, L and D is this like the best implementation of lightning? Is it your favorite? Why would someone run a different one? If this is like, if it is the best one, if it's not, are there other ones that are superior and why? Um, let's see. So for the, the part that really excites me about lightning is that it's interoperable. Um, and, and, and of course there's like, uh, there's ongoing wars between implementations, of course, you know, Okay, Lightning Labs versus Core Lightning, um, and and also there's there's going to be more. There are more. There's Eclair. There's also Electrum has its own implementation, mm -hmm. um, and and they're going to be fighting over users. Uh, for us, it was simply a uh, a choice of convenience that um, L and D was already um, like very very popular. Most of the network uses it. Um, and Voltage allowed us to uh, spin up a, a node that we didn't have to manage and run on AWS ourselves. Um, right so alongside the, the uh, Ethereum nodes. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the infrastructure was already there. It was just uh, just a matter of convenience. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been really impressed with what Voltage has done too. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be on a panel this Saturday with uh, Bobby, who is their VP of marketing i believe you know bobby um i uh i want to chat maybe i'll have him on the show soon uh i think he'd be a yeah, good Bobby's guy great. Have, yeah he's a funny guy I met him at one of the conferences uh, so it is uh is like one of the one of the big like we just added uh podcasting 2.0 like fountain support for for this and I'm, I'm curious like i wasn't planning on asking you this but now i want to like is fountain and like this whole podcasting 2.0 thing is this an lnd native thing or can any implementation support the podcasting 2.0 um i let's see yeah you can you can do uh key send payments um and and also do like is, key send recurring payments, payments. Uh, let's see you know i i'm not uh i'm not for sure but i i believe that's uh, that's how it goes 
Oh, it no. seems like it because I'm not pasting in an invoice. I'm not like getting their lightning. There's no like I'm just sending it right. There's no. It's like I'm sending it yeah, to the I, ether, and that's what. Uh, that's the appeal. Yeah, part. I'm not sure about like fountain specific implementation, but yeah, uh, sure. for them, like you're gonna have a user code, um, and like there will be a pub key associated with with your with podcast that. and so it's, right. so if you're going to use podcastindex.org just to register your podcast then you can just register yeah, it yeah. to go to your own node um yep. or you could use another service uh to actually receive those payments on your behalf and then you could withdraw them to another uh, wallet of your choosing like uh like you could run a voltage node or you could run one on your own uh at home yeah i used to run one in the cloud um, mm -hmm. just like, cause I was wanted to compare how it ran in the cloud environment versus the one I run here. Uh, so for those, those who, uh, who are listening in the audio, we're on fountain, uh, fountain is this new podcasting 2.0, uh, tool where you can actually, and I, I, I really think this is going to take off in the next few years. Um, you can actually directly pay creators. So for example, Jessifer and I are streaming this together we're spending you know an hour of our time two hours i don't know how much amboss is paying you i mean you're the ceo right so you just set your own pay uh but the idea is that like time is the most valuable asset like when you go down the bitcoin rabbit hole you learn that part of the problem is that your time is kind of stolen out from under you via inflation and so our time uh if if you think it's valuable and because we appreciate your time too um, there's this co-creator uh, environment where something like Fountain, it's not the only way, but in this case, Fountain allows you to directly contribute to the creator's Bitcoin. So you can send them Bitcoin directly, it's not dollars, it's Bitcoin in the wallet that you can control. Uh, and likewise, you, we, or we don't send it to you, but Fountain pays you to listen to podcasts. Now, how do they do this? <laughs> I'm going to have to have the guys on Fountain come on and tell you, but. The idea is that you get paid too because your time is valuable. So you listen to this podcast on Fountain, you get sats. And then if you like what Jessica and I are saying, then you can send us however much you think is apl applicable back to us. And because Fountain allows us to split the ads based on multiple wallets after this, like I think Fountain takes a small piece, but like Jessica and I are going to split this 50 50. So, and you can see and verify because Bitcoin's all about don't trust verify. You can verify that the splits are good and split. So hold me to it, man. Um, but yeah, Fountain's going to be giving away 50,000 sats to one lucky uh, person who gives us a boost on this episode. Um, we'll probably pick that winner next week. So uh, yeah, give us a boost. Hit that button. Subscribe. All right. That's the only uh, ad. It's not even an ad. They didn't pay us to do this. I just really like Fountain. And I want to see creators cut the middleman out, right? Like Just like if I want to send you money because you like cooked a great meal for me or like maybe you like you know help me move right like i don't need a middleman for that because of bitcoin and if i'm creating content that you like and you enjoy like and you want to say hey like that was really informative content i don't want to give visa or anchor or any of these platforms 10 percent cut 20 percent cut whatever they take i want to actually give to the person who put the time and effort in and that contributes to the self-reinforcing cycle of wanting to make content which you will enjoy and everybody wins you know so um that is like what i am like most excited about in lightning today like as of july 20th 2022 podcasting 2.0 but to what my my like where, where i've been let down a bit uh is in the medium of exchange aspect so like i can't buy stuff with lightning uh in my local markets yet I know that I will be able to in the future, right? But you are visiting, uh, was it Columbia? And I think you said Columbia. And um, with that, it's like we've seen El Salvador. Like it is being used more of as a medium of exchange in Latin America and more developing countries. So maybe you could talk talk a bit about like why you think that might be the case and sort of what the difference in in feel is in like these places where it's actually being used versus you know, North America where they're just hodling. 
Sure. Um, yeah, lightning is probably not going to be used. Uh, like you won't be seeing lightning voices everywhere um, when you go to other countries. Like right now, I'm in I'm in Colombia, um, and there's there's plenty of banking issues already. Um, you know, people that have uh, credit and debit cards, like of course they've they've got privilege, and like those cards provide a fantastic service. Um, now for for the people like in in developed countries, um, like maybe they won't see lightning as such a such a huge advantage, but maybe from the privacy piece of things. But you're not going to have surveillance capitalism that is scanning your payments um, and deciding what types of ads to deliver to you. So so for the for the Americans, like like you're you're going to be a product um, of these of these banks selling to advertisers. Um, for for people in like developing countries, uh, they may not have the credit and debit card infrastructure, and uh, Lightning will be a solution for for them um, because this is going to offer payments without intermediaries, uh, which is uh, hugely important for the people of El Salvador um, and also East Asia, Africa, where like credit. Credit and debit cards never made it to those countries um, or those uh, those right. parts of the world. And on chain so, doesn't serve quite the same settlement. Sure, it's like because I'm I'm thinking about what you said in the beginning of the show where you sent the thing and by the it didn't confirm and it was too late, right? So it's like in a merchant services aspect, that's like a undesirable scenario. So using Lightning for uh, for paying stuff and like if I'm selling a good. And that person walks out the store with it. I want to know with certainty that that's going to clear. I don't want them to replace by fee or child pays for parent or or it just fall out the mempool. I want to know with certainty that I am getting that payment, right? So I think that is a cool yeah, aspect. Like, awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That's right. Um, but one of the one of the biggest um, user experience improvements that I saw in El Salvador was was people that were um, they were selling you know barbecue um, and and the the person that was actually like making the food um, they they just had an invoice there or a, a QR code and so the people that were just coming by and wanting to make a purchase could scan the could scan the QR code make a payment. And the the person making the food didn't have to stop what they were doing in order to receive money. No like, hands just, full of grease like, or nothing. Like, wow. Yeah, you, you don't have to wash your hands. You don't have to take off your gloves. You can keep doing what you're doing and just and yeah. Do they just your... show them the completed invoice. Like, is that is that how they would verify? Uh, so like for some people, they just took it on trust. Um, and basically, you as a customer could show that you made a payment. To right. to their node and like it it got the green check mark it already went through um, and then they could verify that on their phone at a later period um, if they didn't want to if they didn't want to trust you amazing man uh, wow the yeah the circular economy I feel like is much I mean I, I we talked about this maybe it was in the last episode of Andrew Yang episode nineteen um, where we talked about Bitcoin's adopted by those who need it most first. And I think that's a great example of the barbecue. Uh, you know, I love cooking. Like one of my like I I, I joked with uh, one of my coworkers and said, I'm not really in this for this whole monetary revolution thing. I really just want to like open a restaurant and not have to worry about going out of business if we can catch on. You know, because opening a restaurant is a great way to lose money. Uh so that's really what it's all about. Um, and the idea of like using Bitcoin to streamline that, cut out the middleman, right? Restaurants, it's a hard business to succeed in serving food. It's a commodity uh, in most respects. And it's extremely competitive because of that. And so any place that you can get a competitive advantage, you want to do so. So when you have, you know, merchant services taken several percentage of every single transaction, that hurts your profitability, especially if you're in margins in your food business are super cheap, like super thin. So, um, great use case. Uh, I, I'm, you never told me that about the barbecue. Uh, 
I want to travel down there. Awesome. Yeah, you got to go down to El Salvador, experience it for yourself. Um, no, yeah, in the uh, big shout out. Yeah, big shout out to Galoy, who uh, was like on the ground and understanding understanding some of the user experience issues that people are dealing with. Um, so, and just just finding the the QR code and just create your own invoice. Um, you don't have to stop what you're doing as as an employee or a, a business owner. Well, I, I will. Uh... So, you know, we talk, talk, think, live, breathe about Bitcoin, probably more than, more than is the doctors would say is healthy. Although I don't talk to my doctors about Bitcoin, just dentists. Dentists love Bitcoin for some reason. I don't know why, man. But uh, I, I wanted to kind of put the wrap on today's episode with a couple, le- I mean, it's still Bitcoin related, but less Bitcoin focused. Uh, so. Um, first one is like, do you have, and I, this is obviously the final one, but, uh, but do you have like a favorite Bitcoin content piece? And particularly if you have one that touches on some aspect outside of like the monetary. So like for, I'll share a quick example. Like one of the really interesting parts I find about Bitcoin is the energy and the misunderstanding, energy consumption. And how it can create kind of demand or a time of day agnostic energy, which allows to re- create higher peak capacity renewable energy uh, infrastructure, which allows for a higher average capacity. So more, so it actually creates profit incentives for energy infrastructure. So in that way, like I think there's some really m- money freedom angles that like are not even as important there but we're talking about like innovation within energy and how humans generate it so do you have like a similar like content piece that stands out or like if not even a content piece just like a, a like a a, a a viewpoint on bitcoin that you think most people should hear about? i think i've most enjoyed uh gg's writing um and like i i love the 21 lessons book yes. uh, it's absolutely one of my favorites um because like he, he gets deep into the into the philosophy while being very easy to read but mm-hmm. but just an, an incredible thinker um, and able to explain things simply and also kind of the inspiring aspects of the of the technology whether it be uh time stamping or or simple don't trust verify um, and being able to think deeply about those those topics um, is like one of the most exciting pieces for me, um, as well as, uh, of course, Parker Lewis uh, really being the one to turn me into a maximalist. The Gradually Then Suddenly series, yeah. That, for me too, yeah, man. Yeah, such a good series. It's a shame I have to, you know, I, I work as an account executive at Casa, and, you know, Unchained is like our most direct competition, right? But... Uh, I think like what the, the, the kind of the go back to the open source and the cool part about being that way is that like Jack Maller says this too about the open source industry. Like the pie is so damn big, we can all eat and we're all full. Like we're all like nobody's going back for dessert because the pie's that big. And when you focus on the mission, like which is like truly help I mean Costa's mission is like to empower individuals to achieve digital sovereignty. Right. And, and that can mean a lot of things, a lot of people, but like to me, it means like separation of the, the, the chains that the government has kind of put on you through their, all right, you ha- you're going to use technology to your advantage, but only through our approved ways, only when we say we can. Right. And so, like focusing on just the enablement of freedom. Uh, and uh, I think Breedlove says he's a freedom maxi, which uh, I really like that term. I'm freedom maxi. Um, and so the point is like, if we all focus on the bigger picture, like, and stop like competing, but like focus on building, there's lots of room for everyone to succeed, particularly this early. I think like we're still so early Bitcoin being at 20 K or below it. That is any signifying indicator. Like we're so early. You could buy a whole Bitcoin, with like a minimum wage job. 
save for a while. Maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, it's, I, I think we're at an interesting phase of, of Bitcoin development um, because there there is that spirit of, of collaboration and there is the, the festival of the commons that like just because you yeah. you built this new product on top of Bitcoin. Now, it also has a, a network effect that's positive for another another even a competing product um, just because like our, our goal is to bring great money to to the people um and enrich enrich the world as as Gigi would say um and uh and yeah so there, there's a network effect with uh, improve the user experience just to bring this to people you know it's important to not lose sight of that right like at the end of the day like we talk about bitcoin so much and spend so much time for the but it's really like and i, I i'm guilty it's about the it's about people. Like that's why I love doing this podcast because I get to sit and talk with people and learn about their stories and like find ways to connect with each other, like relate to one another. It's like, oh shit, like I stumbled across Bitcoin and like because I also had a similar circumstance that like set off a light bulb in my mind, which then made me realize certain things about the way of human nature and my own views on how life works so like the the importance of like not losing sight of that like bitcoin's a tool and it's a tool to increase can you can you re say what you just said again about gg uh and, uh, like the increasing yeah. wealth uh, uh yeah uh like bitcoin was designed to enrich the world um enrich. and he compares it to uh to crypto which is to enrich a few people um and so, yeah, yeah, Bitcoin is simply a a simple protocol um, that that can can bring the power of global finance to whoever with a computer and an internet connection. And I think it goes back to like the importance of thinking about like how does money fit into life. This is why I love property people talks about what is money. Um, but it's like it doesn't matter how rich you are. It's like that's like potential energy but like you haven't extracted any value until you trade the money for something else that another human has so like at the end of the day like the money is not the goal it's the ability to like command other people's time and resources in a voluntary agreeable way i guess like if i like give you a hundred dollars and you sell me a you know 16 ounce porterhouse steak at the steakhouse like there was you know the they had, the farmer raised it the had to pay for the feed the logistics to get it there the chef's prep and marinating the the kitchens you know the the rent for the like there's a lots of different elements that go into that and i'm basically like saying hey do all of this for me and i'm giving you this thing instead in exchange for it and it's like and it's an agreeable interaction because we both value it right but like without that end point where there's like something that i want something that i don't have and you do like the the, the point of money is like there is no point like there is no point of money otherwise like it's, it's a tool to trade and if there's no one to trade with because we've all killed each other because we've lost sight of the point or we you know then what good does all of the beautiful properties of this world as good as it yeah it's uh it's it's going to massively change how the the world is is structured i, I believe um just just in the way that uh it incentivizes saving um and also improves the economic efficiency you know uh one just just by being money um solves the coincidence of wants problem but then but then lightning can really improve the efficiency because it means that you can have velocity of money without creating debt uh which is uh just massive innovation uh, huh. so i've never heard it put that way but i understand what you're saying like huh yeah because anytime like you take out a loan from a bank that's money creation right that's like the, how it's created issuing debt right 
Yeah, I'm pulling from Jeff Booth on this one, ah, okay. uh, who, who put it Makes who sense. put it so nicely. But uh, but run. yeah, uh, in in the fiat world, you have to create debt to to incentivize the velocity of money, and and with with Lightning, that's that's no longer no longer necessary. Um, like even you know, despite whatever the Bitcoin price does. It just means that more Bitcoin moves uh, if the Bitcoin price is down. If you look at if you look at Lightning and Bitcoin like a value transfer protocol, um, so yeah, it's just more of the units move if you want to settle for you know a twenty dollar item. It still works the same way, right? Bitcoin's uptime. It, it's like when you compare Bitcoin to something that you know, has been popular in crypto lately, like Solana. Right. When you look at like the uptime, it's like, dude, if you got 50 bucks worth of value, whatever $50 is today, you've got like a nice, a decent dinner. I'm not saying nice dinner, not anymore. Uh, you got an okay dinner worth of value stored in an asset. Like, you know, if it doesn't matter, like if the network goes down for like a day, if that's the case. But if you have like 80% of your or a hundred percent of your life savings in it, that thing better never go down. And all of a sudden the uptime, the security, everything becomes like super high stakes. Right. So it's like the more you put into Bitcoin, the more you care about its security and the more you learn about its security, the more you want to put into Bitcoin. I think that's a beauty. Yeah, like that's the, right. the beauty of the self-fulfilling adoption cycle it's like its network effects are almost like i'm not going to say guaranteed because people get turned off when you exhibit too much confidence but like they are all but like ensuring like a flywheel where once the momentum is sufficient it will sort of continue just with this it will start spinning itself based on that momentum yeah i want to keep it going um and uh all of the things that that uh, a bunch of the Bitcoin maximalists like to talk about is uh, it, it it becomes like this very emotional thing because like your money is so important and uh, and we want people to have a good experience that we're going to talk about the protocol stability and we're going to talk about the the uptime um, and we're going going to talk about undue influences on the network by a few individuals um, because those things can can really uh, run you through the ringer um and like we we just want to have a stable financial system and that's what bitcoin offers i've never i've never had that i, you know, I was born in the 90s and i graduated high school like right kind of around the 2000 crisis so when i started working it was like i think i had my first job like in 2007 2008 where it was like i remember driving i worked at like a movie I remember driving my, I bought, my parents gave me, like, cause like, I, you know, when I was like, I turned 16. I was like, right? and like, I got a job at a movie theater and I was driving to work. And I think it was 2008, might've been 2008, maybe 2009. And I remember spending my whole paycheck on gas to fill up my tank because the gas, price of gas went to like $5 a gallon. And at the time, minimum wage is like $7. Dude. And I was like, I live like 20 miles. I just remember like you know, 35, $40. Movie. And I was like, wait a second. Hold on. Being an adult sucks. Like I'm missing, like something's wrong here. Uh, and I, and dude is like, why, why is a bucket of popcorn? $7. I'd be, I would cringe at the prices now if I saw them. But yeah. anyway, the, uh, it, it, this whole time of like, Sound money is a new experiment in our life, at least. And most of anyone who's alive today is either really, really old and they remember the gold standard, or they don't know anything other than this, like what we have today. Um, so let's, uh, two more things. Um, outside of Bitcoin, what do you like to do? Tell us about Jessifer's non-bitcoin self uh yeah um i i love playing computer games of course and then uh also i, I love playing music um so 
yeah, I'm a classically trained cellist and can also strum on the guitar. So, Jello? yeah, I get yeah, chill. Dude, I wish you had told me that. I would have asked if you, well, you didn't, did you bring, you didn't bring your cello. That's a, that's a hell of a no. thing to, <laughs> to bring on the plane. It doesn't travel well. <laughs> it doesn't travel well. Doesn't travel well. <laughs> no. I How did the you? mandolin. Uh, yeah. How did you learn for, to play cello? Travel. Like, was there like, was that something that got assigned to you when you were younger and you were just like, oh, I guess I know how to do this now. Or it seems like a uh, weird instrument no. to pick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my dad was big on uh, like always having a plan B. Um, and uh, my mom was a music teacher. Um, so, so yeah, music was going to be the the plan B. If everything else didn't work, at least. Well, he, he was right about the plan B. Just got the. Wasn't sure what the B stood for. Uh, I, I don't think he was prepared for so many lines to go through that plan B. <laughs> the, the, uh, so, so in music, like, is there, there's, what's the guy? Uh, he had, he had the piano. Carter recently. Is there any like Bitcoin musicians that you uh, follow? Uh, or people can check out. Actually, tip um has been putting out some incredible stuff uh she's i believe out of new zealand and has been putting out some some uh some raps about bitcoin um and they have bitcoin been raps. fantastic um one of the most recent ones uh was like about securing your your private keys um and it had this fantastic like purple and pink gradient background and an art um really incredibly well done and the really her her rhymes are awesome so yeah i would tip. highly encourage you to go check it out i believe it's tip and z okay uh, huh yeah i might have I might, if she's doing content on self-custody we might casa might have to uh, get it on one of those music videos get jameson in there <laughs> for sure for sure yeah, i would uh I, I've, I've like, you know, I, I'm not, I don't want to like say that we've, the bottom is in because it's, it most certainly won't be if I do. Um, but I feel a sort of renewed hope isn't the right word. Um, like renewed energy that I feel within like last month felt like, and dude, I, Maybe it was like the moon cycles, like Aaron Altman was talking about. I don't know, but like I felt like last month everybody was so downtrodden, like myself included. If you listen to me, I'm just like I'm just negative. I was just, I was just bummed, and it's like the price is basically the same today as it was last time I recorded. But I have noticed that when I talk to people about Bitcoin. I don't know. I feel like people are starting to get it. The Celsius stuff, like, it's almost like, yeah, like at least we, you know, we got to get out, clear out the weed, you know, and like build new and like build better. Build be I'm not going to say nothing. Yeah, I think you're spot on. It was, uh, it was just really disheartening to see the amount of leverage and degeneracy um that was gonna like contribute to bringing bitcoin down to like lower than the like previous all-time high um but at the same time when the price goes down it, it becomes a little bit more peaceful when you're able to build and like just this week it just seems like there's announcement after announcement um of people like raising funds uh, for for new companies, especially on Lightning, um, like seeing Stacker News as well as Zebedee uh, earlier. Yeah, that was today. Yeah. Um, so, like, yeah, very inspiring. Um, and like, you know, I I tweeted about this, but you know, I'm having difficulty keeping up on all the developments in Lightning, and I'm like full time. I'm like the <laughs> Lightning guy, and I just you are the like, Lightning guy. <laughs> like. Is L and D still in beta? I, I isn't Lightning Network technically still in beta? I mean, Bitcoin's still in beta, so Bitcoin's yeah. still in beta, dude. We're only in prod once the central banks are gone, right? Not a day sooner. 
<laughs> we'll see. Uh, we'll stay. We'll stay in beta forever because I mean it's rapid building phase. Um, we're we're gonna break a couple of things along the way, um, but uh, overall the protocol is gonna remain stable. Well, uh, closing thoughts, man. Um, do you have a meme that uh, a favorite Bitcoin meme that I can uh, include here in the in the outro? Describe it. Uh, you do. My favorite one is uh, Morpheus and Neo. Um, Neo asking Morpheus the question, uh, "What are you trying to tell me that I can trade my Bitcoin in for millions someday?" And Morpheus responding that. You know, when you're ready, you won't have to. No, Neo. Millions won't have to. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Mine, uh, have you seen? I I think it was my most popular tweet. I, my, my favorite is uh, it's the picture of Bane in, like, in jail. And it was like central bankers. And then it was like my Raspberry Pi. <laughs> oh, the guy in the pink skin suit yeah, yeah. that's it that's it yeah, yeah it's like, the little guy in the pink skin suit is like my raspberry pie yeah that's kind of how it feels sometimes um and that's why you know, that's why it's great to have a community that's passionate about this stuff i can share the i don't know call it madness call it optimism maybe a little bit of both um sharing that with you and uh yeah man like you were seriously like one of the first um instrumental in helping me like put the fight i would say like i i agree in that like we're still building and i'm still learning a lot but like instrumental in that like early stage it was like oh this isn't just another investment um so thank you for my future generations uh, my future generations thank you for your help me recognize as early as you did and uh that's off to Hats, hats off to you uh, for the work that you do in the community uh, you're you're like you're just ste full steam ahead and uh i see you just like in all these telegram chats constantly i'm like this guy does not sleep um so yeah man uh i appreciate you uh and how, how can our listeners uh how can they find you um thanks so much for the recognition and for the time uh yeah and thanks for the work that you do um but if you want to find me uh of course you can follow at amboss tech a-m-b-o-s-s-t-e-c-h um and then just for underscore btc is my twitter handle uh my little twitter nim which is not so nim anymore um but but yeah you'll see thomas Jestifer there I remember when you put the laser eyes on, dude. Yeah. I actually, I fun fact. I was this was probably like I don't know, maybe eight nine months ago. Kind of like when you were first starting building Land Boss. We were we we had talked a lot more like frequently than you before you started building the company. Um, and I actually was telling someone the president of the United States had the laser eyes on Thomas Jefferson. I was like, wait a second, dude. What am I saying, Jefferson? So you have, you know, successfully hijacked a small quadrant of my yeah. pleasure. <laughs> Thanks so much. Uh, Thomas Jestifer, uh at Jestifer underscore BTC. Um, Amboss.tech. Uh, and there's a video. I think, I, was I the first person to make an Amboss video on YouTube? Or I was one of the first yeah you did a great job on that um thank you so much uh for kind of showing the first features of amboss and it's it's wild to look back because the site looks completely Way different. different i was just thinking like uh, i'm gonna link i'll link that video in the youtube video in the youtube description here and then i should do like a refund it's probably been like over a year there's a lot of different features uh that are in the dashboard like magma didn't exist now that's like yeah. probably the most exciting one of the most exciting parts <laughs> thank you um yeah we we iterate in public um so it's it is constantly changing um and we're always always interested in user feedback um we're we're 
definitely listening and I'm just creating tickets all day long um, with, with the feedback that I get because it is so good. Our users are smart um, and yeah, I'm taking their feedback to heart. So yeah, fire away. Oh, yeah. Stay humble, stack sats, and not your keys, yeah. not your coins. It's been Value Stack Podcast. Yes, sir, for BTC. Thanks for coming on.